In today's episode, Lake Como, full throttle of course. We're going to be camping out on a rib. And meeting up with a wakeboard champion from the Morgan Ski School. And then be trying to do everything to make them fall off. I've already tried out the Marlin 34, the outboard version. The time I went head to head with a hydrofoil, remember? The boat maker has revisited the boats and installed a diesel stern drive engine. So what's changed? For a start, you can't use the stern hollow as a locker anymore because it now hosts two 260 horsepower, 3 litre TDI Mercury diesel engines. A distinct advantage over the outboard version is that the diving board is completely clear and the sunning area is very comfortable. Let's start her up. I love the pilot's seat, adjustable seat, footrest, and then there's a sunshade and immediately underneath there are the instruments. So whilst I'm watching where I'm going, I can also check on how the engines are running. There's even a shade so you can see the display better. The control of all the electric services on board are here. The controls for all the electrics on board are here in the middle, and then on this extension there are the control levers, so your arm doesn't get tired. You can have a joystick put in if you want. You can easily do some almost impossible manoeuvres. You can even slide the boat. Look how well it looks. But what are the advantages of a stern drive diesel? It's slightly noisier than an outboard, even if it's been well soundproof like this one. The axis. Look, the bow is under the horizon. You can see very well. We're going 13 knots and the boat is already planing. These engines really push. They're powerful even at low revs, 2,200 right now, and we're going 20 knots an hour. Listen how the engines purr, especially if I put my foot down. And here's the advantage to the diesel engine. At 20 knots, we're consuming about 30 litres an hour for both engines, which is about 30 to 40% less in respect to an outboard, depending on which one you're talking about. A big saving, eh? Especially if you're doing long cruises. And this boat seems to have been made to spend lots of time on. Let me show you around. Both bow and stern have shades, tents, covers, so you can actually sleep on board. True nautical camping this. There's a fantastically equipped kitchen. Chopping boards, sink, hob, drawers and a fridge of course. If you want to eat on board, take up the sun cushion and pull up the tables. Bow and stern and below here is a changing room and toilet. But let's go back to the driving. As well as the traditional runners, the boat has a step which helps reduce slippery surfaces and increases the hydrodynamic support.
questi motori diesel possono essere tenuti continuativamente a 3.300... These diesels can be kept at a steady 3.300 revs a minute, which, if you want to know, correlates to a cruising speed of 36 knots. And if we push harder... Con una coppia di verado da 350 cavalli ho raggiunto i 49 nodi sul Marlin 34. With a pair of 350 horsepower Verados, I got up to 49 knots on a Marlin 34. So what about these 260 diesels? We're doing 40 knots and we've got to the point where we need a bit of trim. As I increase the angle of the trim, the boat rises up. It's responding immediately, which is good, eh? Means the propulsion system and the hull are in perfect sync. And in fact, we are going faster. Look, I'm using 80% of the trim and we're perfectly level. The boat is just so light in the water. I love it. The engines are revving 4,000 per minute with a speed of 43 knots. At this speed, you can invite all your friends on deck. But what if there's someone who doesn't manage to find a space? What can we do? These are 24 valve engines with a turbine that has a variable geometry and with adequate equipment the Marlin 34 can tow not just one but lots of skiers at the same time. Ah, seems good, eh? Here on Lake Como you can find lots of water skiing champions and many wakeboarders too. Who knows what our friend there will think of the Marlin 34. I bet he's used to boats that are made just to tow the skier. We've got a propulsion system that has two Bravo three-time shafts, which means there are four propellers that are pushing this rig, or should I say pulling our friend here. Do you know how to drive a boat when there's a skier behind? I don't. I don't know where to look. I definitely need to see where I'm going, but I don't want to miss his hoops. Little less. I'll slow down a little then. I wonder if he likes these waves. What is the optimum speed for a skier? And should you do turns or not? The rudder is more or less straight. From bar to bar there are only three and a half turns, so the boat responds immediately, you touch the wheel. I wonder if that will annoy you. Uh, Sorry, Niccolo. Niccolo, you are a champion. Me, on the other hand, I'm a disaster driving a boat whilst pulling a water skier. No, no, you're good. It's good. 
You are very kind because you have motorboats that are made for skiing. But do you think this Marlin 34 could tow a wakeboarder like you? Okay, got it. For having fun, it's perfect. But a train? But to train for competitions, there are boats made specially, with higher cord attachments and slightly different waves. I know that you've achieved some impressive goals. Indeed, in 2012, I was the first in the Europeans in South Africa. This year in October, the Europeans are going to be in Portugal. I'm hoping to get a good result. So how fast does a boat need to be going to tow an expert wakeboarder like you? Well, every athlete has his own speed depending on his weight and wave preference. I go at about 35 an hour. And what's your perfect wave like? Well, I don't like a two-rounded wave. I quite like it sharp, not green. And the bigger, the better. Sorry, what's it supposed to be like? Big and sharp. What does that mean? Upright, steep. What, so you can jump better? Exactly. Well, you've let us see some great jumps. Well done. Thank you. The Marlin 34 is one of the best ribs on the market for the quality of building materials used, for the deck design, the furnishings, and for the care taken with the fittings. A true Italian luxury. It's only got one defect. Stefano, how much did you say it cost? Nearly $260,000.